Hi, I'm Beth. And I'm Staney. And you're listening to Mixed Politics. Mm-hmm. Welcome to episode 42. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too. It's been a while. We keep saying this every time we do a new episode. Sorry, we've been away for a while. Shit's been real. Wait, so. wait, wait. Okay, so the truth is we've been away for a while. Yes. yes. But also, I'll be completely honest with anyone who cares. I have lost interest in American <laughs> politics. We have discussed several times doing an episode, but then we basically are like, there's too much shit going on. I'd, we need to let it die down a little I'd bit. rather go grill, <laughs> hang out with my friends, yeah. sleep. Then, because yeah. I mean, if, if you if you are a long time listener of this podcast, you know I personally, we together, but me maybe me more than both of us, hate to just talk about Donald Trump. Yeah, and like we've been talking we about Donald it. Trump since fucking 2015. Bro. It's been ten years, man. He won't go away. He just won't go away. We were this close. To... Mm-hmm. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you drinking? Oh, yes. So tonight I'm drinking. Bourbon. I think this is the first time I'm drinking bourbon on our podcast. Yeah, this will be an interesting night. <laughs> yeah. So I'm drinking Jefferson Reserve, very old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, a very small batch. It's kind of it's kind of pricey. It's got Monticello on the front. Yeah. Very fitting for tonight. It's nice. I love how I'm showing them off like they sponsor us. Y'all motherfuckers owe us money. Okay. Anyways. Um, <laughs> But I got you know I, who needs to sponsor us what? lime juice because that's what you put in every single no. one. It's not in this one though, but in this one, <laughs> so I have the bourbon plus like a couple of orange peels mm-hmm. and this nice bottle of Brit- uh, bitters, nice aromatic bitters. A, a very dear person who is close to me gave it to me and it's just been sitting around. So I made the drink exactly like how she makes it sans cherry because <laughs> I don't have any cherries, but I, I close enough. There's an apple slice. Don't murder me, all you bourbon connoisseurs. Oh. So yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. It looks really nice. It does. Yeah. What are you drinking? I am drinking cut water, mm. margarita, lime flavor. That is very strong. It is. And I need something a little strong for me. I'm a lightweight. I need something strong for me. I'm not supposed to be drinking. My doctor would probably kill me right now, but I fucking need it. I need a drink right now because politics is crazy. Let's talk You're about... You're very passionate about this topic. Which... But, but before we get into the topics, oh, we yeah. need to tell them what the topic is. So See, what are we talking about it's tonight, Beth? been too long. I forgot what the title was already. <laughs> Hang on a second. What is going on in American politics in summer 2024? I got to do the topic. You got to do the topic. I'm yeah. so proud of him. <laughs> I did it. I had to pull up this board. I, I hope You I, got it, man. Because, well, you actually wrote the title. When, this time, when we so. edit this, I want like a crowd cheering in the back. Like, ah. You got it. <laughs> you got it. All right. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So, first topic is about what happened this past weekend. Uh, at the time of filming this past weekend, there was an attempted assassination on Donald Trump. So I really don't have anything to say about this. I'm glad he's okay. I have nothing else to say because I just don't. So you have a lot to say. No, I don't have a lot to say. Just a little bit. Um, I read a news article today when we were getting ready for for this, and I think yeah, 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 today this morning, and it was saying um, if I could remember the title of the article, but it was, it was giving a list of people and jobs. And people losing their jobs because of posting on social media Mm. negatively about Donald Trump surviving the Mm. assassination attempt. And I thought it was so... It's the opposite of what we were just talking about. Because I was just like, man, that's a really good article for me to have right now. Absolutely. You know why? Because they were talking about like police chiefs, um, like head nurses... School principals, yeah. all these people, they went on Facebook and they were saying, you know, oh my God, we almost got him or he almost died or this guy, if he was just a better shot and just whatever, whatever. And I'm very much opinionated on things like that. Yeah. But what I do know for sure is like, unlike Alex Jones, I'm not going to fuck up my job because of my mouth. <laughs> Right. I think he has to pay something like $1.5 billion and his whole company's over and Oh, he's whatever. bankrupt. He's done. Right. See me? I really love my job. 
Shout out to all the people who I work for and shout out to all the people who I work with. You guys are wonderful. It's been almost two years. You guys are great. I think about you all the time. I love you dearly. Great company. Matter of fact, we're number one in the world in material handling systems and, and still. So, yeah, that's that's what's up. I'm not going to say shit about that because I'm smart. Right, exactly. I like my job. And I would not read anything into the fact that I don't want to say anything because it's really yeah. like, no matter what I say, some I side have, some side can grab somebody, it and twist it. Exactly. You know. So don't read anything into how I feel about something based on me not wanting to talk Actually, about it. Actually, I can tell you exactly how I feel, and I think I can also speak on behalf of Beth. We don't want to live in a country. We know it happens and has happened in history and happens all the time in other countries or whatever. We don't want to have a country where people are running for elections. And bullets are zinging by their ears. Exactly. Regardless of who they are. Here's what you need to do. If you don't like the person who's up there speaking at a rally or on stage or whatever, and, and they're on the ballot, go vote for somebody oh. else. Exactly. Because it's one thing if you're just like, it's because where do you draw the line? It's like, it's okay to kill that guy. And then, and then and then not that guy? Mm-mm. Like, I, got, I had grandparents. Right. I don't want somebody <laughs> shooting my grandpa. Just because of his political beliefs. So yeah. I will go and say that we both don't want that. Get, vote the guy out. Vote for another guy. Whatever. The bullets is bullshit. It, it's it's the weak man's way of making a statement. Yeah. By using a weapon. And we've lost five presidents already. Mm-hmm. Four. 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 McKinley. Lincoln. Uh, JFK. Um, Garfield. Garfield. Four. Four. That's too much, man. We ain't even at 46 presidents mm-hmm. yet. So at least we've lost 10% of our presidents mm-hmm. to assassinations. Mm-hmm. All right. That ain't, that ain't the democracy that we should be no. like. And all of those were, well, the Secret Service was formed after Lincoln's um, situation because, I mean, I don't even know if we can say that word on YouTube. Um, but it, the Secret Service was initially formed to... Uh, research or to, to find counterfeiters and then after lincoln's um situation <laughs> the secret service became the protection of the president oh. so we have situation meaning he got popped in the head in the theater that's right i just don't know if we can say the a word on here without getting flagged so but, wait you can't okay yeah but, certain so, words so here words. so so here's here's my here's my deal with, with that um that's that's a that's a f minus on on the secret service part because if if you let a 20 year old dude get up on a roof with direct line of sight to the fucking former president speaking on a podium everybody on that detail need to be fired the whole everybody needs to be fired just get every new people because you 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 know you know they checked him and he had like the little range finder Mm -hmm. with the thing like three hours before Mm -hmm. and then they still let him in this remind this is so reminiscent of fucking Carl, Kyle Rittenhouse. Mm. Like, oh, he's a, he's a 20-year-old white dude. What, what can he do? He has a rangefinder. Like, whatever. Who gives a shit? That does show... Like, what the fuck is that? You think if I showed up with a rangefinder, no. you wouldn't even hear about me. That, like that, That's right. So so let me, let me agree with you on the bias that exists in certain people getting a pass when others would not. Mm. But let me disagree with you on the Secret Service part of firing everybody. I will take you back to what happened to Kennedy... Clint Hill was a Secret Service agent that was on detail for Jackie Kennedy. If you've seen, we've all seen the Zapruder film, Mm. the guy that jumps onto the back of the motorcade after the pew-pews. Yeah. Yeah, that's Clint Hill. He spent the rest of his life in agony for not having done something to avoid what happened, although he technically couldn't have done anything to avoid it because he was in the motorcade. That was happening back behind them. But... Those Secret Service agents are going to spend the rest of their lives thinking about could have, would have, should have. And so I don't necessarily think that they all need to be fired. I think that there needs to be the investigation so they can determine who actually on Secret Service failed. But every single Mm. one of those people that are on Secret Service detail, they are all feeling accountable for what happened. So they they are going through an emotional roller coaster right now. There's that, but then there's also the, the public display of being... It's bad at your job. Yes. E. It's it's really terrible. And I don't like what the media is doing right now, that they are, are really harping on that point, yeah. especially the head of Secret Service. She's got enough to deal with right now. 
the Republican Party does not need to be, need to be harassing her at the RNC. That's not okay. But let the investigation happen. Let nature take its course. Figure out who fucked up. Let them go. But the rest of Secret Service... Yeah, like, I, like the people on the stage and stuff were doing their jobs, they trying were doing to their get jobs. him off. And, you know, and we need to hear from the people who had yeah. the guy in sight and didn't act. Was there some protocol that they weren't allowed hey. to because it was outside the perimeter? There's a possibility. I was told that he was killed within 12 seconds of the final shot. That is correct. So they were more than capable of f- seeing this guy and being like, hey, somebody need to get him off that fucking... We don't like him up there. Mm-hmm. Like, well before yeah. the shooting. So, because imagine, you're 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 the sniper on whatever building, yeah. and, you know, you're sitting up there, and you're probably just having a Snickers, because who the fuck is going to try to shoot the fucking president? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's whatever. It's, just, it's, it's a regular a ass day. It's a statement. Yeah. That's for so sure. you're up there, you're fucking chilling on the roof, and then you hear, pop, 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 and you're like, what the fuck? Somebody shot at the president, and they're like, and they're like, due east, 45 degrees, and you're like, Got him. The professionals. Yeah. There are questions. Lots of people have questions. So what were y'all doing all the time before? I think it probably goes to what you mentioned before, the bias that could happen. Certain people are not deemed a threat when they they potentially could be. So that's why I said let the investigation happen. But please don't. I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying this to people. Yeah. In general, please do not disparage the entire Secret Service. <laughs> I mean, we all have bad days on the job. We all fuck up sometimes. And so certain people more so than others, but let the investigation take care of it. Yeah. That. One last thing. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, who was it? The family. There's, so oh, there's, there's, two fa- there's two families. The families of the guy who shot the people, um, mm. shot at Trump rather, and shot the people. You know, they're fucking reeling right now because, mm-hmm. you know, they they weren't thinking any of this is their son was doing any of this. Matter of fact, I think by like by 11 o'clock, the dude had the father called and called the police and was just like, my son's missing. Like they expected him to be doing normal, regular shit. He's supposed to be at work. He called off, called off. And then he told his coworkers, I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Like I'm calling off today, but I'll, I'll come in tomorrow. He ain't no Secret Service serious like that. Like 12 seconds later, you not going nowhere. But. So that family, you know, y'all leave them alone too, because they not, had no idea what what the fuck boy was up to. May they, I say something yeah, about that? Yeah, I know that there are a lot of people, myself included, who are going to ask some questions of why don't you know what your kid's doing? He's twenty. That's the thing. I was gonna I was gonna go there, but also there are so many influences on people nowadays. There are even people older than my parents who also are influenced a lot by what they see on social media. So and let's Fox, be, and, and news. And Fox news. 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 Yes, I do <laughs> I do have a bone to pick with all of the news right now. We will get to that. Yeah. But we can have judgments about a 20-year-old who's influenced by social media and does terrible things, but it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you have parents who are engaged in your life or not. I do sometimes have questions about, you know, how can you not see that your kid's struggling a little bit, but I also want to or, be mindful. Or, or just weird. There, I mean, it. I have questions, like but you, I don't You're have... locked up in the shed for the past two weeks, my guy. Yeah. We're calling the cops. Right, that's right. <laughs> so I have questions, but I'm reserving judgment because I don't know enough detail, and I've purposely avoided the detail of that family because I'm not ready. Yeah. To dive into it. It's a little bit of a sensitive subject for me about parents and children and how involved parents are in their lives. So I'm not ready for that yet. I have questions, but let's, I agree with you. Let's reserve some judgment until we know more. The next family, though, of the guy who died Mm -hmm. or the the person, I don't remember. Is a firefighter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, condolences to that family. Yes. You know, I don't care the fact that they were out there rallying for Trump or whatever. You That's your American right of free speech to go gather and yell and scream and cheer and chant or whatever for yeah. whoever you want. You should be able to go back home. Yes. That's what I said the, that day when this happened. The first thing I said when I learned that somebody had died, that person woke up that morning, went to a rally, 
always assuming that they were coming home that night. Yeah. Nobody, Probably tell some stories. Yeah, we saw him and so and so. And just like regular normal life. Like, like you went to a concert. To go to right. a rally right. and not come home. So, yes, yes m- major. So, condolences, condolences, to, to, condolences to, to that family. family. Yes. You know, I'm is this like life, when it comes to like life and death and shit like that, like I, I'm not, it's not about Trump or Biden or Democrat or whatever, is life, dude. Mm-hmm. Life is, is precious and it's serious and. Mm-hmm. Just that's fucking I, gone like that. That's gone over some off off a of standing there. Yeah, that's why I don't I don't condone this kind that's of wild, violence. Yo. I I'm a pacifist, so I honestly I, I full heartedly believe that yeah. people should be allowed to go to whatever rally. I cannot stand Donald Trump, but people should be able we'll to go, go to, to his rally. rallies. That's what you want to do. Come home safely. <laughs> And, but and the, the the gravity of what we're talking about right now, I've not maybe some stations I'm not watching whatever, but like the RNC don't give a fuck. Mm-mm. They don't give a fuck. And there's there's what was it? There was another Ooh, another of another family or whatever where the wife apparently was she's not taking calls from Biden and like Trump the still hasn't family. and then Trump still hasn't called them. The the firefighter's wife actually. Yes. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I read the article about that and she said my husband is a devout Republican. Um, what? That that struck me so weird. It struck me. Isn't too. devout like for like piety like and shit, like religion? Devout Republican? Bro, it's for real a cult though. I But at the same time, even if dude wasn't a cult, he shouldn't die. You know what I mean? But what the fuck? Well, that's the state of where politics is right now. Yeah. It's horrible. Is a- it is horrible because I was so sad and angry when I read that statement from the widow. I'm not judging her. I'm judging the situation, which is that she believes that because her husband was a Republican that she should not speak to Biden. That's not okay. That politics has brought her to that point or her husband to that point before he died. But, but even if you were religious or whatever like that, right? I don't know. And I've grew up, I grew up around a lot of religious people. Like I did too. that's not Christ like for you to not talk to somebody who wants to wish you well and give apologies and cond- condolences because of what you believe in. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, even if you're going to go Christian or whatever, like Jesus helped the Jews and the Gentiles and everybody mm-hmm. in between. So, you know, that's not but 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 I can't speak for the tenets of her religion, seeing that she, her husband is a devout Republican. I don't know anything about that Protestant. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they might be Christian. But I don't know anything about that I denomination. <laughs> I just think that <laughs> I, 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 th- I find it sad that she felt as if condolences couldn't be given to her by a certain person. By a certain group of people. Based on the re- the the politics that they subscribe yeah. to. Again, I'm not judging her. I, I feel sad. And I judge the situation that anybody would be in that situation that they say, because God. I am subscribed to, even the Democrat Party could do this. Yeah. Because I'm subscri- subscribed to XYZ party, I should not receive condolences from XYZ person. That's um, sad. That and this is this is this is exactly what we're talking about in the topic. Like, what the fuck is going on in American What's politics? Going on? The politics is now religion. It shouldn't be. Oh, the crazy. whole thought of mixing religion and politics. But that <coughs> is where some people are. The whole thought. So you can't fathom that. All you got to do to see religion and politics together in like full coitus is turn on the fucking RNC. The Republican right National now. Convention has definitely been that this There week. are so many prayers and hymns sung and like, what is happening? I think I told you this, but I will say this for our audience. I was I was really taken aback. Go find the, uh, maybe I'll find the clip if I can. Um, the first day of the Republican National Convention, somebody was giving the benediction. And I just happened to have it on the background while I was doing something else. And I stopped in my tracks mm-hmm. because I heard this person say, okay, it's time for a prayer. And, you know, people are talking. It's a room full of people. It's just, you yeah. know, this whole giant room full of people. And she said, that means be quiet. Bow your heads. I was really taken aback because I have never heard somebody command something like that. Of, you must... Shut up, and you must bow your head. I'm pretty I was sure. I'm really pre- uncomfortable. I'm, I'm pretty sure the whole country was founded against that. Yes, like it's, all of it. So this is <laughs> that was day one of the Republican National Convention. I was immediately turned off, and it's been the entire week of that. I've actually several times walked out of the room, saying I literally cannot listen to this. It is 
turning myself. They are something. It is. I hope they don't have Kool Aid over there. <laughs> by, by the way, it was Flavor Aid. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It wasn't Kool Aid in the in the. We had Kool Aid, not Flavor Aid. Yeah, but it was Flavor Aid. The Jim, Jim Jones, whatever. Was it really it was. Flavor Aid? Yeah, it was. It was not Kool Aid. See, Urban Legends. Yeah. The whole. Did drink mm, the Kool Aid, foolish. Drink the Kool Aid. Okay, yeah. All right. So, anyways, I just want to say one more time condolences to the family of Corey. Mm-hmm. We are very devastated that this happened to you. It should not have. I, I just think it's awful that we're even in this position to have yeah. to talk about it. Of, of that, that this should not be a historical event. It should not have happened. The, the elephant in the room, that's actually a donkey that will not leave the room. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually going to go up on the card. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk. Th- now, we're going to talk about Biden's age and the issues that he's going through right now. But please understand, these talking points have had to morph multiple times over the past 48 hours because shit happening fast. Oh, my God. Far too fast for us to keep track of. So not interested in that. We were actually, <laughs> we were supposed to film this last weekend. And then stuff started happening. And, and I was like, happen. I was like, stuff is happening while we would be filming. Yes. I can't. And then it, it, I even said for tonight, I was like, do we need to wait another week or are we good? Yeah. And then he's no, like, no, we're good. Because more shit's going to happen. <laughs> yes. So we're going to talk about some things that are probably not going to be relevant anymore because as of today... As of filming, breaking news today was fucking Obama. He was just like, <laughs> yeah, fucking Biden. Fucking Obama. Yeah. Fucking Obama. <laughs> he, he comes out and he's like, yeah, Biden probably needs to reevaluate his situation. I texted him and I was like, well, that just fucks some shit up. Everyone I talked to was just like, well, it's a wrap. <laughs> but there's so much to say about that, though. But before we get to the, to the debate and all the craziness and whatever, Biden's age. I know it's been a talking point for so long for all of these various media houses and talking heads and whatever, but I would just like to remind everyone that Trump is now the current age that Biden was elected. Yes. There, there's not too much difference between their age here, nor is there much difference in how many times they have flubbed words while they're speaking. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat uh, but so, Trump has said over the so, years, he, um, he does not nearly as many as Biden, but he has some whoppers. I don't think the flubs is what what people were concerned about when watching the debate specifically. Um, like, shout out to my coworker CL. He um, apparently he strayed away from the topic and just could not get back, and then didn't know what he was answering or talking about a few times. I stopped watching early within the thing. Sorry. It's, uh, I'm disenchanted with the whole thing, so forgive me. No apologies necessary. Yeah, so it's like it's like it's not just flubs or like misspeaking or whatever. But he also so he strayed away from the topic, didn't remember what he was talking about. But he still also on top of that still had the flubs because I think he called um, uh, Kamala Harris president something vice or, president Trump that vice was, president Trump. That was not during the debates. That was just that was after. Yeah, yeah, and he's, he's so he's still doing it. So here's the mm. thing. I did not watch the debate because I was on vacation with my family. We were having a grand old time out in the middle of nowhere with very little reception. And we all agreed, TV's not coming on. We're not watching this shit. Solid. So I still haven't watched it. I don't need to. I don't want to. Because I, I read it. I like to read my lies. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the debates were not going to change my mind. So a lot of my feelings that I'm about to talk about, not necessarily just my feelings, but historical context were things that I had been thinking about since before then, before the debate. First of all, I hope that nobody speaks about us the way that they speak about Biden when we're his age. It is a hell of a lot of ageism going on. Now, I'm not saying that he isn't making mistakes and he isn't showing signs of concern, but a lot of the coverage that has happened in the media and a lot of the things that I've heard people say in real life and online. Mm-hmm. Y'all better think about how you would feel if somebody spoke to you that way or about you that way. You got to be a little bit careful because 
sometimes people do get a little bit slower when they're older. Sometimes people do forget ages, they forget or forget names, they forget dates, they forget this and that and the other. That happens. That does not make you lesser of a human or less able to lead in general. Okay, so I honestly want to disagree with you, not necessarily on the less able or less able to lead or whatever. It's just that at a certain like what okay, so where where would the cutoff be? What do you mean a cutoff? Yeah, so so if Biden could live to be 125 like a a good number of Japanese people, he should, he's it's it's a, it's cool for him to be president at, do, at 120 at 120. Why does there need to be a cutoff if he's capable of doing the job? No, that's the thing. He's a lot of people rightfully believe that he's not capable of doing the job because of the things that happen when you age. And when you age into like he's at what? He's 80 something. Mm-hmm. Right. So he's eight decades. You're not. A sh- there's no there's nothing that Biden can do better now than he could have when he was 40. Not a thing. Let me take a different scenario. I cannot run. Yeah. As well now as I could when I was 20. Does right. that mean I shouldn't run at all? No. But if we could find somebody that can run better than you and we need the running of the person to carry out the job then we shouldn't be talking to you. We should find the person who can run the best. We should find Usain Bolt and be like, hey, bro, you want to be president? That's what should happen. We shouldn't just keep holding on to Ben Johnson from 1990. Understood. But I think we're talking apples and oranges. We're talking about a person who is currently in the job. Yeah. He has a four-year tenure. Yeah. And, and, to be, and to be fair to Biden... From today, going back to when he was elected, he's been doing a phenomenal job. And it's not just bias. I can honestly make a list of things from year one, year two, year three that he's done. That's just been... And and he's done them quietly, which is exactly what a president should do. Like, I don't need you on the news every fucking day. I said that long before he was even... You know, it's not a popular... We don't need to watch the the presidency, you know, or the, the 45th presidency. We don't need... Or 46. We don't need that. We just need you to just do the job... Keep us safe. Have us keep getting food on our table and shut the fuck up. And don't don't have wars with other people that threaten us. That's it. That's the whole job. Whole job. So if you're doing that and then on top of that, doing other things in like healthcare, social security nets, bringing back uh, chip for children, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like, God damn. Okay. You're really good at this job or you're really good at delegating this job. You're really good at getting the people moving who need to be moving. That's fine. However, when you are calling your second in command, the person who sits next to you, right? They'll be like me right now going like, yeah, man, I do this podcast every week with uh, Crystal. That would be weird. I sit with you. You're the only person who sits here. How can I forget Beth? And he called his vice president, Vice President Trump. Because what what's going on, dude? Like now we have legitimate questions. We do have legitimate questions. But I think the way that you describe the situation, I would agree with you a hundred percent. You've kind of walked right into the point that I was trying to make, which is the job can be done, and the only fallback is that when this person goes on camera, he doesn't really look the best. Are we the kind of country that needs to be entertained? That like, needs I, to like have I need to see optics. Biden every day. That I need to see him and he needs to be a certain a certain look, a certain feel, a certain way. I can tell He's gotta you. have suave. He's gotta be this and he's gotta be that. And he's or, gotta be strong. He's gotta posture. He's gotta yeah, look to the I left. Yeah, because I agree with you. He's gotta get the job done. And he has been getting the job done. Yeah. And then more recently, he had a bad debate, a fucking bad debate. Yeah. And then ever since then, it's this self-fulfilling prophecy the media has jumped on. By the way, like, we've, had, um, had a, we've had amazing presidents that had bad debates. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then, this, is a, this is the kind of stuff that, like, doing this podcast forces me to go look up. Like, is this the first time somebody had a shit debate and then turned out to be great? It, it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really hard, especially with, like, just the litany of things that have happened since that debate. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, can the, we, the can flubs. Can we pause on that for a minute? Because yeah. I do want to focus on... The Because I do want to get to that, but I mm. want to kind of focus on the first part of what we talked about, which is the president doing the presidency and how modern politics has turned into this optics game of you have to look a certain way mm. and talk a certain way. 
where did this come from? And it wasn't the case before because we had a president who was sick as fuck and we kept it hidden from the world so he could continue to be president. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke in 1919. Yep. Now, I've been talking about this since 2021, I think. I have been bringing up this point in my personal life. My friends are sick of me talking about this. But every time they talk about Biden too old, whatever, I keep saying the presidency is not it not it shouldn't be what we're making this out to be in the modern day. The presidency should not be this pedestal that we've put this person on. That if this if the president has a bad day, that suddenly we fall apart. No, we we have lives. We have things that go on mm-hmm. without the president. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke in 1919, and the public largely did not know how severe his situation was. That he could not speak. And his doctor did not even share with his cabinet how bad the situation was. He tried to cover it up. So Wilson's wife and doctor pretty much kept his cabinet from even speaking with him for the next year and a half. So we had a president who was incapacitated for 18 months and even wanted to try to run for re-election. And you know, and you know, you know, our constitution literally has a whole section on that. That ha- a whole section on that. It happened after right. Wilson. <laughs> but the point is, we had an incapacitated president for 18 months, and nobody fucking knew. And the nobody was ca- The country was running. We have put the presidency on a pedestal that it does not need to be on. So all of... Th- this is why I get so... I'm going to need to calm myself down here. I get so agitated. I've mm-hmm. been agitated for months hearing people talk about, oh my God, Biden had a bad debate. Oh, he's not our nominee anymore. We need to get rid of him. Why? I just want to ask, why do you think it matters so much that the president looks and talks a certain way? That's... It's I think, not I think, that I think, important. I think the public thinks it's important because the president is like exemplary of like all of us is, is not exemplary representative of all of us so if the president isn't physically able mentally able you know etc cetera, etc cetera, it it the optics of it makes it look like well the country is looking like that because a representative looks like that but who has consistently been banging that drum the question of is he capable the media has been banging that drum when after because, the debate happened, because he's still capable, he's still doing he writing still and capable. signing the documents he needs to sign. Yes, I saw interviews with people after that debate, and mm. people said, "Yeah, it wasn't good, but he's still my guy." But the media kept hammering that point: mm. is 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 he sick? Is there something wrong? Do we need to be thinking about if maybe he, the Amendment Twenty Five? What's going on with him? And then that instills fear into the voters, and yeah. so then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, which brings us to where we are now. I will take us back to the nineteen teens, which is we were fine when we had a, a president who couldn't even speak. Yeah, we were fine because it's not just about the president himself; it is about the cabinet, it is about the executive branch as a whole. This government does not operate with one person alone. And that is part of the problem we're seeing with the Trump administration and the fact that he's running for re-election. He keeps saying, I alone can fix it. I am your retribution. I, 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 I. The presidency is not supposed to be about one person, and we need to stop making so, that. But here's the difference, though, and I, and I, and I know this is, it might sound like a little bit nitpicking, but in the case of like Woodrow Wilson or whatever, he was already president and this thing happened. And it was just like, mm-hmm. for the stability of our country and our economy and whatever, whatever, let's just keep this quiet and hush and just keep sailing, right? Mm-hmm. Would we then pick up Woodrow Wilson off the street who just had a stroke four months ago and be like, that's our guy. We want yeah. to elect him, right? Yeah. Because he's not the best of us. The person who can't speak and has a stroke and is bedridden and needs to fucking use a cane or whatever is not the person who we're going to say, hey, lead the military. But we need to ask why. Because I still am going to ask, is that person still capable of doing the job if they can't speak? Because that's a very ableist thing to say that if they can't speak, they can't lead. They still could lead very well. How do you inspire? Now, there's a lot of speaking and speech, and obviously you have to have speech writers on staff and, and shit. That's a p- huge part of the presidency. Maybe but close to 50% of the presidency is speaking. But why? Now, if you're not, because p- 
people look not necessarily me but general public look towards the president for inspiration but for why? direction for explanation and if the general public today not necessarily as it should be but as it is they're looking for that and if they can't see if you couldn't speak that's 50 percent of the job you need to go sit down and i know it sounds ableist right it because you can literally ableist. you can write it and make somebody else speak it. There are so many ways around it, right? But people are looking for a representation when they're looking for a president, which is exactly why they voted Donald Trump in the first time, right? Because they wanted a guy who was self-made and tell it like it is and whatever, whatever. They're looking for people to represent them who they believe looks like them, which is weird as shit because a billionaire don't look not like you, whatever. But that's what they're looking for, and that's what they're sold. And that's... The problem is that people are looking to the president to fix their problems. And I and I, I just started giggling a few minutes ago because I wrote myself a note here. Isn't it odd that the party of rugged individualism is so fucking obsessed with who's leading this country and who's leading them? Mm. If we are truly supposed to be a, a country made of people who don't want the government to be involved in our lives, why are we making it such a big point about... How the president speaks, looks, and acts. Right? Again, I, I understand the point that we historically have had the, the presidency in this position of inspiring us. I do think that the president should inspire us to be better people. But the fact that we placed him on, because it's only been men so far, and I will get to that. <laughs> we placed him on this pedestal saying he has to be this image of perfection mm. or an image of a strong man to make us feel better about ourselves. Again, especially with the Republican Party, they're supposed to be the party of small government and, and this party of rugged individualism, thank you, Ronald Reagan, yet they are so obsessed with their leader yeah, if you're because, truly because individual, the, because you the party care. because the party's changed and like it's completely changed right now. Mm -hmm. You can watch it live on the RNC, right? Yes, they're the party of Christian nationalism. That's what that is. That's, what uh, it that's seems. The, now. If you look at just the first part of that, Christian, right? It's a bunch of people who need to be told by either a book or some that dude in the sky how to be, what to say, what to live, how to live, you know, and what's going to happen to you if you don't. So that's mm -hmm. not far away from. Their, their actual on the ground identity, they want a strong man. They want an inspirer. They want a leader because when they go to church on Sunday, that's why they go to get that from their imagination that they've personified. And I, I'm all in favor of them getting that from I'm not church. drunk enough. I'm using words like personified. I know, right? What? So I'm all in favor of them getting that from their church. But what I'm saying is I think we place too much emphasis on the image of the president themselves mm -hmm. Rather than looking at the policy. I'm about the policy. I want to know the plan. There's so many goals. I want to know the plan. A lot of people don't want that. A lot of people want That's my A lot point. of people want comfort. That's my point. They're looking for comfort in the wrong place. They're looking for comfort in the president of the United States. Yeah. No. Where okay. they, where they, get so, to, they get to wear a, they get to wear a shirt for at least two years that says, we won. And that makes them feel really, really good. It does make them feel good. Seek therapy, please. Therapy is wonderful. I love it. Therapy is where I get my comfort. It's not in the president. So See, betterhelp.com, this is where we would plug you. <laughs> so I do have one more point to say about this because we... Actually, two more points. I'm sorry. Now, I have been persuaded in the last few weeks watching some of, De of Biden's speeches, seeing him forget names, say the wrong names, look a little bit slower in his movements. He, there's a shift. There's a change in him. So I'm not saying he's incapable of doing the job. I'm recognizing that there has been a change in him in the last year. So I recognize that now. But I take issue with the people who are saying he's unfit to run for president, but somehow he's fit to be president. I kind of feel like if you say he's unfit, that he should be resigning the office and not just stepping out of the race. No. So I think I think when they speak like that, they 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 should be using the future perfect tense and they're not because this is America and fuck English. But what they mean is that yes, he might be capable of doing the job now cuz we see it and the job is being done, but we don't know if 3 
two, four years from now, if he will still have it to do it. Are you sure that's what they're saying? I think that's what they're saying. It's not that they. It's not that he can't do the job today. Now there are some people who are utterly convinced that this is the worst president we've ever had, and this is the worst time in American history because he's president and he's not doing a good job. There are those people, sure. and so those people would think that we don't want to have a bad presidency for eight continuous years. But then you have some people who are like, eh, life is fine, mm-hmm. whatever. Eggs cost a lot, but moving on. I like those people. Yeah. But they're looking at it like, well, life is fine now, but can do we want him doing this at 85, 86? Me personally, my parents are 72, 74. I don't want them doing anything. Why? At all. Oh, because I've seen them do the things. But you would not, would you not? Have- I have seen them do the, I've watched my own parents do some things where I'm just like, you were better than this 20 years ago (laughs) you clearly need help now i understand what you're saying but i take issue with applying that across the board to say because every anybody is 74 that that means they're incapable i think it should be a case-by-case basis no it's not it's not not, it's not i don't here's the thing i don't i think the word incapable is too extreme Mm -hmm. i don't think it's it's just less capable. And we don't want anyone who can ascribe less capable to, that's how the thinking is of the general public, doing this job. Because, for example, I don't know how your parent, how old your parents are, but I'm assuming they're over 70, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say we're all, we're going on a family trip. We're going to Cedar Point or whatever. Who's driving? Just be honest. Who's driving? Well, this situation does not happen in my family, so I cannot answer. Okay. We're going to an apple orchard. Whatever you go. Who's driving? Not the oldest people. And it's not because they're incapable of driving. They probably drove to the house to meet everyone. But when you get there, we don't want you driving the six-year-old babies. This situation does not apply to me because my dad is not allowed to drive anymore. And my mom lives in a different state (laughs) and I don't see her. So, um, well, well, for the last five years of my, five years, maybe the last 10 years of my life, my parents haven't driven anywhere that I was going. Because there is no way you can react faster than me, <laughs> drive better than me. You can't do no, you can't do anything. My mother can cook better than me for a fact. My father can fix cars better than me for a fact. And then it's just a steep slope after that. I will say, if I were going, if I, if okay, let me think. My stepdad would probably want to drive. Yeah, but and I want- would let him drive because he's a good driver and he's still very well capable. He's he's almost 80 yeah. and he is very very No, I agree. Capable. I agree, but we going to have half an hour less at Cedar Point cuz we going to get there at 10:30 instead of 10. You see what, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's not going to make it, yeah. but we going to get there after it opens. All right, point taken. So, but here's my issue with the the question of why is he capable to be but not capable to run? Be- because the running includes four more years. The being is just right now. I think that's the honest, just the, the math of it. But the intent is that there would be another four years of his administration. Yeah, they, people ain't looking at administration. They're looking at the, the representative. This is, we, we just talked about that. We, they're looking at the representative, and they're like, I don't want an 86-year-old representing me, which is ridiculous because they'd Why? be cool with an 83-year-old representing them. So let me, let me take you to the conclusion of why I'm asking this question. Because from my standpoint, as a woman, a very capable woman, a professional woman who's been in the corporate world for many, many, many years, when I hear people say, yeah, Biden's not, he should step out of the race, but he should still be president. Let the Vice President Harris run. Let her do all the work, but let him still be president and kind of sit in this swimming in mediocrity. Mm. Do you understand how insulting that is to have her do all the work and him still be president? Well, I submit that if you think that he is unfit to run, that he needs to resign the presidency because he is unfit to be. And let her do the job that she's probably already doing, but let her claim that as her job. Let her do it. Let her be the incumbent. That's that's a good that's a good point. And it actually reminds me of a time when Obama was close to the end of his second term, mm-hmm. and there was this thing floating around on Reddit. I don't I don't visit that cesspool anymore, <laughs> but I did at the time. And there was this thing floating around on Reddit that, like, on the very last day 
of his presidency, like January 19 or January 16 or whatever the fuck, right? Um, He should just resign immediately. Just like, I don't want to be president anymore. Sign it off and done. And then give Joe Biden the presidency for one day. So that Trump would have to change everything from 45 to 46 and they wouldn't have time. (laughs) See, I'm 100% behind this. I'm not behind the shooting people, but that I can get behind 100%. You know what that reminds me of? (laughs) Okay, okay. So that reminds me of when George W. Bush won the election, won the election. From Janet Reno. Yes. Well, no, wait, hang on. Catherine Harris, that was the name of the attorney general in Florida, that yeah, made the, the final the, but decision. But the judge was Janet Reno. I don't think, no, it wasn't Janet. She was attorney general really? of the United States. But anyway, so Catherine Harris was, oh, wow, we're going into a Florida. No, go, go, go. We're going into a Florida hole. So <laughs> Florida hole. In, the, in Lake Okeechobee. <laughs> That's where we're going. When, you know, if you, if you don't know about election 2000, look it up, man. It is wild. That was my first election that I ever voted in for president. So, um, when... That was my first. Yeah, it was our first, yeah. Did you say first or second? First. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I, remember, I was too young in 96. I remember where I went to go vote. I yeah. was, it was in Delaware, Ohio. Delaware, yeah, exactly. Mm. So, anyways, when it was... I mean, let, let's be real. The Florida shenanigans, there was an issue with the ballots... And by all accounts, Al Gore actually would have won that election had the ballots been done correctly, had they not been confusing. People thought they were voting for Gore and they voted for Buchanan instead. Anyways, so when that when that election went down, Florida, it was it was it was a very bitter moment in politics and in the White House because the Clinton administration, Al Gore was vice president. So he was assuming he was going to win the presidency and stay in office he had to leave. George W. Bush and Dick Cheney come in. And the Clinton administration had stolen all the W keys off of the keyboards. I do remember that. And yes, I knew you would remember oh, that when I mentioned it. So good. That, that petty shit. This is politics. <laughs> you know what the weird thing is, though? Like, Obama didn't do any such thing. Because he couldn't. He couldn't. Because he's too good of a person. No, no, but he couldn't. You know, he would be publicly crucified. Because, like you have yes. no class, and you didn't belong in the White House. And he did not shit. want to feed into any yeah. stereotype. I remember he invited Trump to the White House mm-hmm. for dinner. The the entire family. Yeah. Well before it was like December or some shit, mm-hmm. you know, and um and then he he left the customary letter in the drawer, yes. you know, wishing luck and success and all the best and yeah. whatever, whatever. And it's just like we have come so fucking far oh from like decorum because trump didn't even go to biden's inauguration that's some petty bullshit right there yeah that's a man that's, child anyways yeah I, oh. so yes i really take issue with people saying that he should still be this mediocre president while his vice president does all the work mm-hmm. no no stop that shit right now I think that, the, and now I'd like to dive deeper into the strategy going forward, but suffice it to say, the only way that I see this situation working out, given everything that's happened the past 48 hours, how we got here is that Biden thought he was going to be a one-term president because we all thought the Trump would just go away. After yeah, he lost. And, and then somebody else would just be like, All right. and then Biden be just like, yeah, I'm old as fuck. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm like just gonna step go. aside, let cool. Harris. And then but Trump was just like, yeah, I'm not 2024, and we're right. like, what? Yes. Kind of got to some- kind of got to go with the guy who we know have defeated him before. Yes, a lot of people are upset that he went back on his word about being a one term president. But tell me that you didn't also assume that Trump was gonna disappear after January 6th. I mean, come on, we all thought that dude was going to jail, but. He's still around, so Biden says, obviously, I was the only person who beat him, so I got to stick around. But that's how we're here right now, is that Biden's like, okay, civic duty, got to do my due diligence here and make sure that Trump doesn't win another election. But where do we, there are two scenarios that I see the Democrats pulling out on top. Two scenarios only. I think... So you're getting right now into the GOP strategy and the Democrat strategy? Yeah. 
I think we should do a whole other episode. You think so? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm cool. So, Beth, tell these people where they can reach us. All right. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on TikTok. We are on whatever else. Wherever you listen to your podcast. Yeah. And we're here on YouTube. We're on so. Deezer in France. What? What is that? It's a, it's a <laughs> streaming service that okay. they have. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yes, you can find us anywhere that you stream. And we do have our social media up there. We have, i be honest, we have not updated it in a while because I have taken a break from social media. So refreshing. It is so you refreshing. You should do it, too. Obviously. So good. You need it. Listen to the podcast. You don't need to go like or comment anything. We've never asked anyone to like or comment no, or share or subscribe. No. But we do appreciate the people that do. Yeah. Alyssa, I love you. You always comment every single time we put up a new YouTube video. So, Didn't um, we send her some stuff? Yes. She like won California? our contest. Yeah, she won our contest the uh, first time in the merch. So, oh, yeah, gosh, she's Alyssa. amazing. I talked to her just recently. So, Anyways, we are on all social media, so check us out there. We do actually have a Rumble account as well. What is that? That is the MAGA-ish type of... Yes, I do have a Rumble oh, account. Oh, why are we doing that? Oh, I haven't uploaded anything. Okay. I just I created the account. <laughs> because, you know, equal opportunity. Whew. But I knew that... For me to upload there, I have to actually manage the account, and I wasn't really ready. One, two, one, two, three, not it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not it. Ah. Yes, but we also have a Patreon. He's going to tell you all We about do. That. And if you do like our podcast and you want to support us, um, this stuff is not free. Mm-mm. We've been paying for it um, by ourselves, but also with the help of Patreon uh, subscribers. There's a lot of free stuff there. You get extended episodes. You get more footage. Um, you get to ask us questions. You get shout out on the show. You get to access to Discord. Access to Discord to see what we're going to talk about well before, or even suggest what we should talk about. Um, all of those things happen, and then much higher tier of prizes. There's T-shirts. There's other merch that we would send to you. Other people have um, subscribed at that level and have received, like Alyssa. Yeah. You know, shout out to her and Rayon and Sierra. I know these people by name. I know. I really do. I really do. Um, but th- those have just been our long time, like, top ones. There are other people who do or have subscribed, and I, d- I don't know them by name because I don't know them personally. We've yeah. never, like, interacted. But we appreciate you, too. Yes, we, we do. We really do. And hope you like the stuff that you got, whatever it was. Um, but all of that is at patreon.com slash mixed politics. All right. Yeah. So we're going to do another episode, but if you join our Patreon, you get extra stuff. Yeah. When we get really drunk. So. Drunk. It's, uh, you know, some people think it's great. I don't know if it's great. Like, I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's okay. But, but I don't, I think it's okay because I, sometimes I get really too drunk. Some people think that's hilarious. I, looking at it, I'm just like, ah. That's me. I can give you my opinion. It is hilarious, but it's a bitch to edit. It probably is. Because yeah. you gotta you like to cut out a lot of stuff like we can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, well there's gonna be some of that tonight because she's drinking cut water. And um so to all our analysts, pundits, and experts, experts. you wonderful apes that have been here for yes. more than two years. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on episode 43. Mm-hmm. One before the Obama episode. Yes. 